<laughs> hey folks, Tim here, FT Lot for the Love of Trains. Welcome back. Uh, this is installment number two of my Helix construction. Um, one tool that I recommend if you're going to get the Helix, whether you do the threaded rod or the block idea, um, is get yourself one of these um, digital levels. And this is a um, this is a Craftsman. I think they call them a torpedo level, or but it, it'll give you degrees and then percent of grade and. Uh, it's real nice. I kind of I don't know if you guys can read that, but it'll tell you what percent of grade you're you're at. Uh, very very handy tool in the construction of a helix. So um, with that, let's uh, turn the camera to the other side and, and show you what I've got so far, and show you what we still have left to do. So let's get to it. All right, I've cut out most of the pieces um, out in my driveway the other day, and then I've got a bunch of them painted here, and I just have really the first level kind of up and a, up and around and just sitting there. Now I'm going with the uh, post method, I guess, um, as opposed to the threaded rod. Um, again, no no particular reason other than the fact that I have plenty of this wood available, and I don't have to go out and buy the threaded rod. Either way would work for you. This is just going to be easy enough for me. So, but what I did was I cut a bunch of blocks, like a one-inch block. And now the bottom of this is 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 cut flat. Um, and then the top of that block has a two percent um, cut, and designated by the arrows. The low side is on the right the high sides on the left. And then I went ahead and cut another block at an inch and a half and two inches, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, and then when I got all the way back over here, um, I was at, let's see, four inches and then 4.25 and then at that point I'm going to be stacking on top of the existing uh, helix boards so at that point I'll be making a cut here and having it the same dimension um, as as all the rest for the for the rest of the way up because I'm not changing any elevation I'm just going to keep it consistent and my guess is that it's going to be uh, four inches between the two levels. Hey. So back here, um, been about oh two hours, I guess, for me to put this all to try to get the grade just right. I wanted to have just as, about 2.1 between two and 2.2 percent grade. Um, and I can fine tune that here in a little bit. But um, what I'll do is I'm going to attach these tracks and start laying it. And from those re railers there, I'm going to put insulators on. And my my top level and the helix will be on one 5 amp booster. And the bottom level will be on a separate 5 amp booster. And I'm probably going to get one of them uh, PM42s that I can. Um, separate out even further districts and that way if I ever have a short down on the bottom in the yard it won't short all the trains running around down on the bottom just that particular area um, I'll show you as I go here but what I'm going to use is um, these are just number 10 flat washers and number eight by three quarter inch uh, flathead Phillips screw head or screws. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I, I tried to find out which washers would fit down in between the tracks 
between the actual, um, I guess you could call them the spikes and not move around too much. Um, and then also it's just enough that it'll sit even or even just a little bit below the rail height so I won't have any problems with the airlines dragging on it or anything like that. So that, I, and I'm not sure how often I'm going to put this, but um, that's what I'm using to tie down my track in the Helix. And I am, at, I am not putting anything else down for a sub road bed, cork, nothing like that, foam. I was just going to go straight on to the um, MDF. So. Um, we'll see how loud that actually is and maybe I'll have to modify my <laughs> my process afterwards but for now this is what I'm gonna do so let's get to work on laying some track all right and as I usually do I like to solder all my track joints together and especially I'll be doing this in the helix so um, a little bit of flux on the on the rail there and just a dab of solder and of course I cut it so that the joint is in a straight position so there's really no tension on it just like that once that cools then that joint will be in there real nice and I cut back at least one um, tie to give there's enough room for me to to make my radius curve here and that's pretty much what I'm gonna do from this point on um, one thing I was gonna have was a um, try to make up some kind of a template to put on here but because all my boards are not you know I didn't stack ten boards on top of each other and cut the same diameters um, there's a little bit of fluctuation this way so all I did was I set my camera tripod in the center of my hole here uh, my helix cut out and put my tape and got my right dimensions and, and just kind of drew um, some dashes all around on the tops of these things so that gives me a pretty good idea of what radiuses I need to follow um, so we'll just keep building up I have a track tool, um, homemade one from a long time ago, and I'll basically just set this out to figure out what kind of a space I'm going to need between the two tracks there, and that'll keep me a big enough radius that I can keep all my big cars like this, auto racks and things, from touching each other as they're going through the the helix so let me get to work and we'll show you the progress after I get it around some of this first level all right so there's the first five sections of track on the outer um, 33 inch radius 66 inch diameter um, roughly 2% maybe just a hair over two percent I'll let these cars go back down and it is louder than I I'm gonna probably like but but not too bad so let me keep working on this. That's all the time I have for this installment. Um, hopefully I'll have a lot more done and we we'll can start working on the second level of the Helix. So again, thanks for watching. Until the next time. Down the road, my I'm out.